The doctor tells Ian and Barbara that he and Susan are cut off from their own planet. Shortly before departing 1963, the doctor had arranged with a local undertaker to have the hand of Omega buried in Shoreditch Cemetery. He returned to check that it had been buried as per his instructions, only to discover that it had been removed. He determined that his future self would arrive at an earlier point in order to deal with it. In 1903, after receiving a wealth of information from the future, Grigory Rasputin foresaw Ian and Barbara's first meeting with the doctor in Totters Lane in 1963. Before the doctor and Susan settled down in Shoreditch in 1963, they took a brief trip to St. Albans on 17 December 1997 to ensure that the United Kingdom would remain safe during and after the 1960s. Unbeknownst to either of them, the fourth doctor and his companions Romana II and K9 were in the vicinity on the same day. Later in this incarnation, the doctor returned to 76 Totters Lane in the company of Stephen Taylor in 1966, shortly before meeting his new companion Oliver Harper. And in 1985 during his sixth incarnation. By 2021, Totters Lane was a commercially zoned area of Shoreditch which was mostly made up of office blocks. A car park had been built on the former location of the junkyard. The events of this story are passed down as a trickster myth. Different sources give different lengths for the Doctor and Susan's stay in 1960s London. Susan says in this story that, the last five months have been the happiest of my life. This is supported by comic, Operation Proteus, set in October, in which their arrival was detected, four months ago. However, in prose, Matrix the doctor says that, for six months it was perfect. Prose, the rag and bone man story states that the doctor had been paying rent for, the last nine months, and in prose, time and relative, Susan says in a March journal entry that they've been in 1963 for, five months, making their total stay 13 months. On the 23rd of November 1963, the fourth doctor and K9 Mark II returned to Totters Lane to retrieve a Heshrax insect which he had been tracking the day that he left. While there, they met Debbie, Susan's best friend from Cole Hill School. Debbie, who turned 15 that day, was concerned about Susan's sudden disappearance as she knew that Susan would never miss her birthday. She had met the first doctor on one occasion but the fourth doctor did not recall seeing her before. He also did not remember Susan ever mentioning Debbie but admitted that he was not always the best listener. He told Debbie that Susan decided to stay on 22nd century Earth but then amended this by adding that he chose for her, expressing the hope that this decision was for the best. Debbie was thankful that she met the doctor as, while she knew that she would never see Susan again, she could at least live her life safe in the knowledge that she was safe in the future rather than spend it wondering what happened to Susan and fearing the worst. After arriving in the past, the doctor is puzzled over why the TARDIS is still a police box. The 11th Doctor traveled back to 1963 and sabotaged the chameleon circuit, shortly before this. The 11th Doctor hears various voices from his past when a time rift from the past leaks into the TARDIS. One of those voices is Susan saying, I made up the name, TARDIS, from the initials, time in relative dimension in space. Another voice is Ian asking, a thing that looks like a police box, standing in a junkyard, it can move anywhere in time and space? During this story, the first doctor is seen lifting a rock, preparing to murder a caveman who is slowing down the group. He then later, seemingly without explanation, puts it down. One account states that after losing his memories during an incident with the master, the eighth doctor visited the first doctor to regain some of his past memories. His presence was stated as being the reason behind the first doctor's change of heart. Another account, given by the doctor himself, states that it was, in fact, Ian who had persuaded him not to do so. Susan had a John Smith and the Common Men album aboard the TARDIS. The first doctor did not like it much but he came to enjoy the group's music by the time of his fifth incarnation. Fanfare for the Common Men, the doctor states, fear makes companions of all of us. This is a sentiment subconsciously given to him as a child by Clara Oswald in the barn where he sometimes slept.